super excited for this. That's why I wanted to do a video. Uh, not the first video I was going to do when I got back to YouTube, but this is going to be the first one now. Um, I'm just super excited. Nostalgia, things like that. It's been almost 30 years for me for this game. I was just a wee little lad last time I played it. What's going on YouTube? Evil Foo here. I'm finally, finally back for good, I believe. Um, I had some health issues. I tore an intestine or my ab my lower abdomen. I tore my lower abdomen. Ab 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 no, my abdomen. And uh, it took me, I, I've been, so I've been bedridden for about three weeks now. But I'm finally up and about. Um, and I'm doing this video now. But I'm finally up and about, and I want to start doing my YouTube. Uh, a couple videos a week, two, three videos, maybe four. Who knows how many? At least two videos a week from now on. I want to try and get my subscriber count up finally. I've never, ever focused on trying to get my subs up or anything like that. I'm going to start trying to get consistent content out because I enjoy doing this. I like doing this. And I have a friend, a, well, a couple friends really, that want to do a, a podcast with me every week. So I need to get my subscriber count up so we have an audience. Otherwise, we'll be talking to ourselves, which is okay. Sometimes that's the only way to have an intelligent conversation. But um, so I'm throwing together this GoldenEye video here. I recorded this footage um, a couple weeks ago, maybe less than a couple weeks ago, like 10 days ago, something like that. When the first night GoldenEye came out, I recorded this. My computer wasn't even actually working yet. Um, I hadn't come back from the shop. Well, I had come back from the shop yet, but I hadn't reinstalled the software or anything like that. But I just recorded this. I recorded my reactions to playing for the first time. I wax nostalgic for a while on how I got into GoldenEye at first or how I got into first person shooters, things like that. I'll put a timestamp on here so you can skip forward to when the actual gameplay starts. But this is just me playing the first level for the very first time um, on the GoldenEye uh, remaster. Uh, a couple things about the GoldenEye remaster. Now in retrospect, um, that kind of disappoint. Uh, one, it's 30 frames a second, which I could have swore I said it was gonna be 60 frames a second. Um, or maybe they just did higher frame rate, something like that, when they advertised it first a few months ago when they first announced it. But it's disappointingly only 30 frames a second. That's still better than the original Nintendo 64, which I don't think it ever hit 30. Sometimes it went, it was probably around 20 the whole time you played it. it actually went down probably to single digits at times, definitely down to like 10 frames a second. So 30 frames a second is an improvement, but it's like almost a 30 year old game, so it's kind of ridiculous that they can't do uh, 60 frames a second. They said it mixed up like the Code Mystics or Mystic Monkey, whoever the guys were, you'll see their, their logo at the start of the gameplay footage. But um, whoever did this port, they said it messed up some of the game logic or something like that. Uh, and I don't know the inner workings of the Xbox, how the FPS, FPS boost program works or anything like that, but I would think um, if they just did the 30 frame a second lock, which is locked at 30 frames, they could use FPS boost to get the 60. That shouldn't mess up the game logic at all. But again, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not sure how that works or what's going on. Jason Ronalds with the, the back compat team or the technology team or whatever, they've been extremely quiet for a long time now since they announced the end of the um, adding backwards compatible titles. Almost probably two years ago now. It was over a year ago for sure. So what they've been working on, um, hopefully it's something good because it's kind of concerning or disappointing at least that they haven't announced anything for a long time. So what this is, is just my reaction playing. I'm not a streamer. I don't record myself playing things. But because I'm so nostalgic for this game, I went ahead and, and did not a stream, but I recorded myself reacting to it and playing it for the first time. Uh, unfortunately, the game capture data uh, didn't actually work. So I, what I'm going to do now for this video is why I did this little preface here. Um, I'm going to I re-recorded myself or I re-recorded the first level over again. So the commentary or my reactions, what I'm saying, might not um, sync up with the footage perfectly. That's just because that's not that original gameplay footage. But I didn't want to redo it and act like I was experienced for the first time because I'm not, not fake like that, pretentious. I think that's bullshit. I know a lot of people do that. They, oh, I'm reacting to this for the first time where they've actually watched it several times or played whatever it is several times. I'm not like that at all. I don't care about that kind of shit. Um, to be phony or fake or anything like that. So this is just uh, my first playing and reactions. You'll see me on film. It's probably gonna look bad because like I said, I'm not a streamer. I don't have a, a setup for that or anything like that. But, uh, and then there's just a gameplay footage of me playing through the uh, first level on Secret Agent difficulty. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'm sorry this is so long and rambly. I just had a lot of nostalgia for this, or a lot of nostalgia for this, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, talk about it and exp express my uh, my feelings and thoughts towards it. And even though this uh, this port is kind of disappointing, you know, there's no online multiplayer, which sucks. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing that sucks. But um, and then the 30 frames a second frame cap is really strange. 
And they could have, you know, fixed things like the text and stuff like that. They just took the original, what was it like 240p or something like that text for the Nintendo 64 and just blew it up to 4K. So it's, it's normal, the right size on the screen, but it's super blurry. It looks really bad. So it's definitely not a perfect port, but I'm just glad to be able to play this again. I know you could play the uh, Xbox 360 version on a, a, the Xenia, um, you know, uh, Xbox emulator on PC, which you can actually do that on Series S and X now too, if you download that onto your uh, the U UMP, a Universal Windows program, UWP. But uh, I'm not, I don't know how to do any of that kind of stuff. I'm not really into emulating anything. I know the uh, little mini consoles I have are emulating things and backwards compatibility really is actually just emulation too, but those those are more official. I like those better than just the, uh, I don't know, maybe one day I'll get into emulation, but right now I don't. But anyways, I'm just saying I'm glad there's an official way to play this again, because I haven't played it since 1999, probably before that actually, but 1999 for sure. Once the Sega Dreamcast came out, I didn't play my Nintendo 64 anymore at all, so I can say for sure I haven't played this since at least September 9th, 1999. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Keep your kung fu evil. What's going on, YouTube? Evil Fu here. It's been a long time since I've made a video. Uh, my laptop broke. Well, not the laptop itself, but the SSD drive. I have an Intel SSD that came with the computer. It's an Asus, I think. Um, the SSD broke. The repair shop I took it to, they wanted to sell me, you know, one from them. Obviously, they're a middleman, so they can mark things up. But I asked uh, which one they recommended. I think they said the Samsung 980 Pro or something like that is the the top of the line right now on the market or something like that. And my laptop's not, it's not a gaming laptop or anything. Um, well, I guess maybe it is, but I don't play any games on there. But, so I probably didn't need the top of the line one, but I bought it anyways. Um, but I bought it from Amazon, so I didn't have to do the markup from the computer shop. So I bought a two terabyte, which is fantastic because the one that was inside my laptop was only half a terabyte, so it's gonna have four times the memory, which will be fantastic. I am actually recording this without knowing if it even works yet. I picked it up from the repair shop, uh, yesterday, I have a uh, torn, but well, I'm not a doctor, I, I don't know, I assume I have some kind of tear in my, like an abdominal tear or something like that. I've had pain for several days. I'm going to go to the hospital and get checked out tomorrow morning, first thing. I should have went today, but I couldn't be bothered. I was trying to rest it out and see if it would heal, but it's only been getting worse. So I'll get that taken care of. But anyway, so I'm making this video without testing the computer. I assume the computer is going to work. It's just all they do is swap out the hard drive or the SSD. But today is the day. GoldenEye 64 finally releases for Xbox and Switch. Um, I played the original back in the 90s, late 90s when it came out on Nintendo 64. Uh, I bought my Nintendo 64, which is right over, right there, right behind the camera actually. Um, I bought that originally when it came out for Turok, the Dinosaur Hunter. And that was the only game I wanted on there. When it came out, I bought that. It was totally worth it. It was worth the purchase just for that one game. But GoldenEye came out a year or two later, whenever it came out. And it was fantastic as well. I got Ocarina of Time, things like that later. So there's a lot of good games I've played on there, but I bought it just for Turok. It was totally worth it. But GoldenEye was fantastic. I was dating um, a girl at the time when it came out. Uh, she had two brothers, so they had played uh, GoldenEye a whole bunch, split screen. She was super good. She was a total split screen cheater. Uh, so we were dating, she would beat me every time because she, anywhere I spawned, she would know right where I was gonna be. She'd throw like the little invisible mines or things like that, uh, where I was gonna spawn. So as soon as I spawned, I'd die. So she's really good. Uh, same thing with Halo when it came out years later. Uh, we played Halo together, so like, we ended up getting married. We're long since divorced now. This will actually be my 20th anniversary of being divorced this October. Uh, but anyways, so GoldenEye was fantastic. I love first-person shooters. I was always a console kid. Um, I got a 32X with Doom. Uh, I love Doom so much on there. It's like, oh, this is fantastic. It's amazing. Then I found out the PC version is so much better. So I, I was working. My family owned a restaurant, so I was working at a younger age than I should have. Like I'd been working full time, not full time, but I've been working um, part time since I was like 12 years old. And they gave me um, money for, I was like busting tables and eventually I was washing dishes and I cook and a kitchen manager, things like that over the years. But uh, I did that until I was like a teenager and I left and joined the army. But um, anyway, so I saved all my money I had and bought myself a 486DX2, like it was like the top of the line computer at the time. I think it was a, I think it was a compact or a, I don't think it was a Dell. It doesn't matter, it does not matter at all. But I bought the top of the line computer that I could afford um, and got Doom. And by that time, Doom 2 had came out on there. So I played Doom and Doom 2 and uh, like Dark Forces, that uh, LucasArts game called, I think it was called like Outlaws or something like that. It was like a first person uh, Western shooting game, it was fantastic. Uh, Duke Nukem 3D came out. 
uh, Heretic, Hexen. Hexen was starting to push my computer a little too much. It, it didn't have like a math code process in there. It was like the top of the line right before the Pentiums came out. Uh, so it, it ran Hexen, but it didn't run it super great. But um, so I was super into first person shooters. So I played on PC only for a couple years. Well, not only, but primarily on PC for a couple years. And then um, when the Sega Saturn came out and the, the, place, the original PlayStation, the PSX, um, I switched back over to console and started playing on those. But when Nintendo came out, um, Turok was like the first really good. There was Power Slave and there was uh, Power Slave on the, uh, I think it's called Exhumed in Europe, but it's called Power Slave by Lobotomy Software in the States. That came out for the Saturn and the PlayStation Vert and the PlayStation. They actually ran a little bit better on the Saturn. It doesn't matter. It was a great, great game. Kind of like a first person shooter with almost like some. Uh, Metroidvania elements to it because you get powers and go back to levels and access levels you couldn't or areas to levels you couldn't before and things like that so it's kind of cool in that respect so Power Slave was like the first specifically made for console really good first person shooting game then Turok came out and that was also fantastic but Goldeneye when it came out that basically it did everything that Halo gets credit for like it made people interested in actually playing a console a first person shooting game the controls had never really because um, we didn't have analog six at the time so the controls didn't uh, translate over super well. You could play something like Doom because then you have to look up and down. But as far as the full 3D one goes, um, which Turok taught me how to play that, and they, they did um, inverted, so I was the inverter, gross inverter for a couple of years until I switched over to regular, now I'm regular. But anyways, um, Power Slave came out, and then Turok came out, and then Goldeneye. Gold, Goldeneye came out, was super fantastic. Had four player split screen, became super popular, sold millions of copies on Nintendo 64. So it was, it was really good. So for years now, they've been there have been leaks of uh, Rare having you know remastered uh, GoldenEye for the 360. Footage leaked is actually you can actually download the full game now on PC and the, the emulated version that never got released for whatever you know licensing problems that Nintendo owned a lot of the licensing for the game, and then like uh, Eon or whoever owns the uh, James Bond like movie license things like that they own some, and then Microsoft bought Rare so they own Rare and Rare was involved. It was, a, it was a huge nightmare of complicated um, rights issues that kept it from coming on Xbox. So finally they reached some kind of Xbox, they finally reached some kind of agreement with Nintendo to release it on both the uh, current Xboxes and the Game Pass and then um, Nintendo Switch on their online pass or something like that. A Nintendo Switch version is going to be, it's not going to run as good as the Xbox One. I mean, this is like a, almost a 30 year old game now, so it's not going to look good on anything, but it's going to run a lot better on uh, Xbox. It'll be 60 frames a second, uh, you know, 4K, things like that. Yeah, customizable controls, achievements. So it's going to be fantastic, but the Nintendo Switch version actually has online multiplayer. The Xbox version is only split screen. I don't know if that's because Nintendo wouldn't sign off on them doing online or what the issue was or if Xbox cheaped out. I don't know the details of why they don't have online on the Xbox version. I think it's a huge missed opportunity or missed opportunity. This isn't going to you know shift millions of units or anything like that, but just as an homage and just a pre preservation of this game to present this game to people, it should definitely have online multiplayer. That would have been fantastic. But if you want online multiplayer, play the Switch version. It'll be good on there as well. Um, so we're gonna try this out for the first time. I, I have downloaded it earlier. I came down here. I'm recording this. I don't know if the, my computer's gonna be able to edit this later and get it uploaded to YouTube, but I'm gonna try this out. Um, I'm not gonna be able to play it. I got everything I need here. I have my my headset. The Hulk is holding my headset for me. So I'll get that on so I can record it and not take over the audio of that. I got a brand new cold Red Bull, sugar-free, of course. Uh, we have my Actual Walther PPK that I have. This is unloaded. If you don't know if you can see that or not, it doesn't have any bullets in there. Um, if you know anything about guns, this doesn't have a slide release, strangely enough. So the only way to get the, the uh, slide to release back is you have to drop the magazine down a little bit so that the flash doesn't hit and then you can get it back. But this is just, it's unloaded. Um, this is a working actual gun though. This is a fantastic little piece of uh, weaponry, firearms, whatever you want to say. I'll do a video about this uh, firearms if anybody's ever interested one day. I'm kind of a, I used to be an expert with firearms, who knows what I am now. Now I just play with controllers. But this is the controller, the uh, this this analog stick right here, Nintendo innovating again, and they had a trigger on the back, which is fantastic. This cord's cut on this one, this is a display one I have. But um, this made a big difference for first person shooters. And then Rare lets you set up any kind of controls you want. You can actually do two of these, so you do dual analog sticks. A lot of people don't realize that, even back on Nintendo 64. But 
Uh, this thing was atrocious, <laughs> like ergonomically, I, would, I never want to use that. But in the vein of keeping things as classic as possible, um, a couple years ago, or a year ago, I don't know how long it's been, but Hyperkin put out this 20th anniversary edition uh, Duke controller. It's like the, the old uh, original Xbox controller, the Duke, before the, it came out with the uh, Japanese revision and then the, the smaller, better um, controller came out in the States as well. But I've never opened this, so I crack this open real quick and hopefully uh, this works without with minimal setup here. <clears throat> I think it's just a, it's a wired controller, so it should be plug and play. And it has two things to tape on it. Uh, it'll be smarter than the box. It's only 5% smarter. You don't have to be a lot smarter. Let's get this out here. But I figure this is a classic game, so I'm gonna use the classic controller I got with the original Xbox. I actually loved the Duke when it came out. For one, it had dual analog sticks, so it was fantastic, but the, I have big hands, um, so it felt good. It was, it was a weird controller, though. I got all these little papers here. But inside, we got the box. This is the 20th anniversary edition. I'm not gonna play with this very much. I'm probably gonna keep it as more as a collectible. I don't think ergonomically this is very good anyways. But they added some things. Hyperkin added a couple shoulder buttons. So those weren't those originally there. I think they moved the triggers a little bit, things like that. So it's got some updates on here, but we're gonna take this plastic off. Take the plastic off. And I think this comes on, like the original Xbox startup video plays on this, I believe. It's got plastic on both the bumpers as well, I think. I don't know who does not it's, it's really shiny. No, it does have plastic on there. But, uh, and then it comes with the cord. This is a nice braided cord. These Hyperkin controllers are really good. I've heard only good things about them. So it comes with a green, Xbox green braided cord. So that's awesome, USB cord. All right, I got this plugged into my USB hub. I have plugged into my Xbox Series X. Um, it's not super long. It's a pretty short cord, unfortunately. I'm gonna plug this in and see what happens here. I can't see if it's playing yet. There it goes, it plays the original Xbox. I thought it had sound, I guess it doesn't have any speakers on there, but Xbox and the 20th anniversary, so that's very cool. Very reminiscent of the old uh, Dreamcast controllers, but that's on. Let's see, everything worked? Do I need to update this or anything? I'll check for an update real quick. Devices and connections, accessories. Controller. Let's see. Update now. It does have an update, so I'm gonna update this. This is a little behind the scenes action here. I realized um, I stopped this while I was updating because it's gonna take a while to update. I realized I'm an idiot, and my Xbox controller is the one that's updating. So once this one's done updating, I'll update the Hyperkin and then we'll get started on the okay. game. All right, sadly, I am trying to update this and there is no update available for this. That's kind of concerning, but, um, oh well, I mean, it should work just fine. Uh, there is a option when you're trying to update this to vibrate the controller. Hi, babe, come on. That girl's gonna join the video, I guess, too. But um, uh, this, concerningly, this didn't vibrate. Is my alarm going off? Because it's time to give that girl his medicine, which is probably why he came over here to let me know. He's pretty good about letting me know. His internal clock is very good. But when I hit the vibrate, this controller it didn't vibrate. It does say on the back of the box, um, I, I was reading that, it does say on the back of the box that it vibrates, so it has vibration, so we'll see when we get into the game here. But I'm gonna go give Daigoro his medicine, and then I will get down here and record some gameplay footage. I'm super excited for this. That's why I wanted to do a video. Uh, it's not the first video I was gonna do when I got back to YouTube, but this is gonna be the first one now. Um, I'm just super excited, nostalgia, things like that. It's been almost 30 years for me for this game. I was just a wee little lad last time I played it. I didn't play this, um, we used to play, like I said, my ex-wife and I, we were, we were married at the time. We didn't get married until later. But um, we used to play GoldenEye multiplayer all the time. And the campaign was fantastic. This has one of the most aggravating, like companion escort missions, a couple of escort missions. Natalia on both of them, she's just terrible. She runs like right in front of people that are about to shoot. You will shoot her, the enemies will shoot her. But the nostalgia is real. I haven't played this since the uh, the Sega Dreamcast came out, September 9th, 1999. So it could have been the 8th for all I know, I don't know. But uh, I may have played this last September 8th, 1999. But it's been since 1999 since I've played this. So what is that? 23 years, almost 24 years this year. So I'm gonna go give him his medicine. I'll be right back. All right, Daigoro has been medicated. Now I can sell in for the night. 
and to play GoldenEye 64. Uh, let's do the checklist real quick. Classic controller plugged in. We're gonna use this for the first time. I, have, I use this little leopard pillow here for an armrest when I play. Let's see, I got my, my PPK. I have an old copy of a GoldenEye DVD for sentimental value, I guess. I have a tomahawk, which I used to open my box, but we'll keep this in case we have to do some melee combat in the game. Uh, my, I have my old copy of uh, GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64 somewhere, but it's in storage in a box somewhere, so I don't know where that's at. Got my Red Bull, I'm gonna crack this open. I'm a germ freak a little bit. So like whenever, this came out of a case, so like a four pack, so it was sealed, but still, even that, I always blow off the top of the cans before I, I drink out of them, because I'm a freak. All right. And we'll get this headset from the Hulk here. Hulk can go back over this side now. Turn this on. Mute my TV so sound doesn't blow out here. All right. And let's see, where's Goldeneye? There it is. Let's get it started. Super excited for this. It's not the best game. I mean, it was good at the time, but I don't think it's aged super well. Because it has extremely frustrating escort missions. But with modern controls, it should be really cool. It's widescreen now, 60 frames a second. 4K, I mean, it's Nintendo 64 graphics at 4K, so they don't, they're not going to look great at all. Ooh. And that sound was super loud. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. GoldenEye 64 starting up. Let me see. I need to start the recording on this. Start recording. All right, recording started, so hopefully I'll be able to sync this up later. Super excited for this. I mean, it's, uh, it's a Nintendo 64 game, so it's not gonna look great, but with modern controls, and I don't think the AI was that fantastic or anything. It was pretty neat at the time because you could shoot like limbs and things like that and they recognized it. But uh, I'll shut up for this. So Pierce Brosnan is definitely not my favorite of James Bond, not even close to the top at all. Um, but GoldenEye was fantastic. His other movies, Toronto Never Dies wasn't bad, but the rest kind of sucked. Uh, he's a little bit too much of a girly man for my enjoyment. Like, Sean Connery is always James Bond to me. Daniel Craig would be second. And Timothy Dalton is actually third for me. Timothy Dalton was a badass. He should have done more James Bonds. But uh, we're going to start this up here. Like I said, I don't think this is going to be aged super well. It was fantastic at the time, but uh, with modern controls and... Uh, you know, it's widescreen, 60 frames a second, things like that now. It's going to be fantastic playing, I think. Like, a lot of people say, oh, have you played Goldeneye recently on Nintendo? It hasn't aged well at all. That's because it was super blurry. It ran at 20 frames a second. The controller sucked. So I think this is going to be fantastic. Sorry, there's a little demo playing right here. Sorry, all right, I'm going to hit this. Let's see. We're going to select this file right here. Select mission. Damn. I like how it defaults to double O agent. So uh, what's cool about this game, uh, again for the time, was really cool. Like agent is the easiest difficulty. You have like one or two mission objectives. Secret agent will add a couple, and then double O agent. Not only does it raise up the like the damage you take and the enemy AI and things like that. Might even add more enemies in there. I'm not sure if I, I don't remember that, but it'll add. Oh, like I said, I can show you right here. So like on the, this one has four mission objectives to complete it, uh, and then if you went back to Secret Agent, that only had two. And then, what does Agent have? Agent only has one. Bungee jump from a platform. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna go double O Agent. I think with modern controls, it should be really easy. All right, YouTube, I'm back. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a streamer, so I have no experience doing any kind of streaming stuff. And when I did this, so when I captured this a couple weeks ago, I had a headset on for my face recording so the sound wouldn't bleed over the camera. And the uh, Daigoro's medicine alarm, he has to take medicine twice a day, his medicine alarm starts going off. I must have hit, it went off earlier than when I first started, but I must have hit snooze instead of off. So it came back on and with my headset on, I didn't hear it. So this alarm is blazing like on all of my commentary I did. Uh, the commentary didn't match the gameplay video anyways because the gameplay video didn't take, the capture didn't take. So I've just uh, gone ahead. I, ca I catch a few minutes after the alarm's been going off. I finally notice it. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just cut from here. I'm gonna cut all the commentary out. And I'll just pick it back up on the end of the commentary when I was just wrapping up the video. So it'll be um, just the uh, first level here with mostly uh, no commentary at all until the very end. 
I apologize for how crappy this video is, but uh, I want to get this one knocked out so I can start doing regular videos. So we'll get this one. I'm salvaging what pieces I have of this. It's, it's a huge mess, so I apologize. But uh, thanks for watching, and keep your kung fu evil.
that's where I need to jump off right there. Probably get a cool cutscene here. All the cutscenes are using the, you know, the in-game engines. Uh, this was on cartridge back in the day, Nintendo 64, so they couldn't do like a full motion video or even clips, video clips or anything like that. So I think, I think I just jump off. Okay, that's weird. It shows the camera go all the way down. Now it's going to show the video of it. Interesting choice. There he is. James Bond did it. All four objectives complete. Oh, it's very dramatic. I got this is the third jump off now. We did it. Complete, 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 complete. I didn't get any uh, achievements at all. Let's see, how do we find achievements on Xbox? I've been playing PlayStation a ton recently. Oh, so I did get one. It just didn't show me what it was. Run. You completed damn on any difficulty. Really, I didn't get anything for complete facility on any difficulty. I thought I would get something for getting all four objectives, but I guess not. All right, 55 achievements in there. Very cool. So that was just a quick look at GoldenEye 007. I can finally take this thing off here. But uh, yeah, GoldenEye 007. Fantastic. I'm a little rusty, obviously. I need to get used to the controls a little bit. Um, it was cool using the old Duke control uh, for nostalgia's sake, but I am going to uh, use a standard. I'm going to unplug this bad boy. I'm going to put this back in the box and put it in storage somewhere, maybe set it out somewhere because it does look cool, the 20th anniversary edition. But um, yeah, that was Goldeneye. Thanks for watching. Um, if you're watching this, then my laptop is working good, and I will start having um, at least two videos a week from now on going forward. I'm going to the hospital tomorrow morning. So <coughs> <coughs> that felt good on my intestine, but uh, so wish me luck. But thanks for watching, and make sure to keep Kung Fu evil. I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. <laughs> Fuck this shit, I'm out. Fuck this shit, I'm out.